Hey, welcome to another episode of MLM Renegade. Today, you guys, I'm really excited. We've got a success interview with John Melton. Uh, John is an absolute stud. Uh, you know, when we recorded this, he took just tons of time out of the day to do it. And uh, he's, he's awesome. I'm excited for you guys to hear it. Check it out. So here's the million dollar question. How are network marketers like us, who've tried everything their upline ever suggested to be successful, and yet still struggled, who grew up with technology and aren't stuck in the 20th century, how are we supposed to grow our downlines in our bank accounts, and yet still have time for real life? My name is J.R. McKee. Join me as we explore how to use 21st century learning and technology to grow our downlines and build lasting wealth. Simply put, this is MLM done different. Welcome to MLM Renegade. All right. Hey, welcome back in, guys. Today, you know, I'm really excited. We have, uh, I've actually been trying to get this interview on the books now for a couple of months. Uh, and, but, uh, but this guy, this guy's tough to pin down. He and his wife have had incredible success in network marketing and uh, currently are among the top earners in the company that they work with. Um, and in the past, have been top earners in other companies. Uh, this is uh, John Melton. Um, and uh, anyway, yeah, welcome in, John. Excited to be here, man. Really pumped. Hey, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited to have you. So maybe just give us a little bit of background, kind of tell us, uh, you know, kind of tell us where you came from, kind of how your journey in network marketing started. I mean, you and I are, uh, you know, kind of a similar age here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun to kind of reminisce and, and talk about some of the, the, the bad old, good old days. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt about it. Well, JR, first of all, I appreciate the invitation and excited to provide some value for your listeners I uh, got involved in network marketing when I was 20 years old and I was broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> I had no background in business. I had never heard of network marketing or MLM or Amway, any of those things, but I was definitely open and I think mostly because I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. Like most of my friends were going to school, getting degrees to get jobs and I didn't really want a job. I didn't want to work for anybody else. Uh, I didn't know what else to do. So I was just kind of like, you know, I was living in the moment, right? Drinking, partying, like that's what I was into. I was into living in the moment, living for the weekends, right? Uh, going out, chasing girls, getting into trouble, drugs, fights. I mean, I was stupid. I was young and, and immature, especially between the ages of like 15 to 22. <laughs> uh, that was like my prime of being just a completely re just crazy rebel, you know, teenager slash, you know, young, young adult and <clears throat> network marketing saved me. Now, unfortunately, the first company I was with went out of business. Uh, they were in business for five years. I got involved year three by year five. They were shut down by the FTC. I believe uh, I was so young back then, didn't understand what was going on. I just, you know, basically knew that the company didn't work, right? It went, it was done and yep. I'd spent more money than I made, but I learned a lot, but I have to be honest. I, I kind of, felt like maybe everybody was right. Like I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this MLM stuff, it is a scam. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this, maybe this isn't something I should do. Maybe I need to find something more legit. And I, I did join another company, but honestly it was only because everybody else was kind of like, all right, here's where we're all going now. And everybody kind of followed suit. They kind of restructured the teams a little bit, but for the most part, we all kind of, you know, stayed with the same organization and I don't know, man, it just, it didn't, it didn't feel right. It didn't, it, I just couldn't get excited about it. I mean, I think we did it for a few months and it was funny because we used to work out of offices and they shut down all the offices. So oh, wow. we ended up moving to Colorado from Maryland, you know, I'm 22, whatever. And, you know, we're like, all right, let's, let's all move to Colorado because there's an office out there and we can, we can work uh, with this, this big leader out there. Anyway, long story short, we move out there, they shut the office down. <laughs> So we're basically not even working the business. I remember they started saying, this is, this is ironic. They started talking about using the internet to build the business. And I'm like, the internet is for old people. I don't want to sit on a computer all day. That sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, the irony. Uh, Cause that's how I, that's all I do now is build my business online. Although I'm still not on a computer all day. I mostly work from my phone, right? My phones, uh, I have a note nine and a, and an iPhone XR, like I got two, you know, I got two phones. So long story short, 
I, I keep saying that, but I will shorten it up. <laughs> we decided, you know what? I'm going to go get a real job. My wife got pregnant. My dad had died of a heart attack, uh, you know, which was devastating. I was, you know, close to my dad. And we decided to move back to Maryland, get quote unquote real jobs. I had a guy that told me that I'd be good at mortgages. I had recruited his girlfriend into my downline in the company I was with, but I'd met him through her. And, you know, he, he dropped out of college. He was making all this money, thought I'd be good at it. But JR, I didn't even know what a mortgage was. <laughs> Isn't it funny? They don't teach you this stuff in school. They don't t- teach you what a mortgage is. They don't teach you about credit, things that are kind of important as an adult. Yeah. So I, I get into mortgages. I make 125000 my first year by simply applying what I learned in, in MLM, honestly, learning how to talk to people, mm-hmm. how to overcome objections, how to have a strong work ethic and, uh, you know, not make excuses, just having like a, a, a you know, a, an income producing activity mindset. Like it's all about producing income and doing those money making activities. So, so I just hit the phones hard. Again, I didn't know what a mortgage was. Obviously I figured it out pretty quickly, but I was in the job interview and I remember telling the guy, like, I don't know what a mortgage is, but I will outwork everybody in your company. I guarantee it. And I did. I made more phone calls than everybody else. I didn't know what a mortgage was, but I, I could make enough phone calls to figure it out and learn the language, the lingo, figure out who I could do a deal for and who I couldn't. And I made 125000 my first year. Uh, 250 my second year, became the number one loan officer in the company. But here's what I came to realize. You're only as good as your last month. Mm-hmm. And I got frustrated because it was just the rates were going up. It was becoming more difficult to get a loan approved. I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I don't want to do this forever. So I got to figure out something else to do. And I could maybe start my own mortgage company or go into a completely different career path. I just, you know, it was a little bit challenging because, you know, I dropped out of community college. I didn't want a real job. I was making a lot of money, but it was just very stressful, right? I'd be angry all the time because, you know, you could work on a deal for six months and it dies at the closing table because the title company made a mistake. It's just, it's, you know, can be very, very infuriating to work that hard and get paid zero dollars on something you put some time and effort into. And again, you don't get paid residual. You don't get paid. You're only as good as your last month. So every month you're starting at zero. So I got back into MLM. I kind of missed it. The same guy that recruited me in the first company, a buddy from high school, got me into this next company. Uh, It sounded different and it really was. It was like complete opposite. I went from selling lotions, potions, uh, pills, water filters, you know, skincare, hair care, cleaning products to selling uh, uh, services. It was a service-based MLM. First month, I made like 6,000. Six month, made 10,000. Fired my boss in 2008. Went full-time with that company. I was full-time for five years and we were doing meetings every night, Saturday trainings every Saturday. I was never home with my family. Started to feel like a terrible father and just started to feel like, you know, this, I got to, I got to look at other things. And we started studying online marketing. We started studying like all these different, like, you know, gurus, right? Gary Vaynerchuk and Shalene Johnson and all these different experts that were talking about building businesses online. I remember we went to like a Danny Johnson seminar, like some of these people, your, your, your audience may be familiar with some of them. They may not be, but the fact of the matter is we realized that we needed to find a better vehicle or a better way of doing what we were doing, either or. And in 2013, I decided, I don't think I can build this company that I've been with for seven years, five years full time. I put my, my sweat equity into it, my heart and soul. Like we, it, it was like a family. I mean, it was the hardest. In my entire business career, JR, that was the hardest decision I ever made to walk away from that company, by far. That's and we walked away in 2013 and we, we launched a new business we put 7,000 people in that company in two years. We were killing it. <laughs> and then they got shut down by the FTC. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, and ironically, it was also the same company that we had joined back in 2003 that had the internet aspect to it, right? They started talking. Remember the company I said that we started using the yeah. internet? With, that was the same company. Oh, my goodness. And so they got shut down. Essentially, two companies that I joined had been shut down. Now, I will tell you, Vima opened back up. They did open back up, and they're still in business today, and I still take the product every day. I still believe they're vitamins. Vitamin, Vima stands for vitamins, essential minerals, mangosteen, and aloe vera. 
all in one two ounce shot. You take it every day. Okay. I, I still believe that's part of the reason that, you know, knock on wood, my family and I really get sick, right? We take it every day. Anyway, that company, I, what I liked about that company is they were very cutting edge. They were leveraging social media. But the problem is the products were expensive. The shipping and handling made it even more expensive. And it was too heavily focused on recruiting. So that's when we really went down this path of like, you know, number one, we need to find a company that's customer centric. But number two, we're going to teach it. We're going to teach that the profession needs to, to level up. They need to do things differently because I know what it was like to go through a shutdown not once, but twice. And it sucks. It sucks way more when you're making six figures. Yeah. You're making 10, 15, 20,000 a month and you just, you know, boom, your company's gone. And, you know, luckily we had already built a brand. We had a big network at that point. A lot of people knew us. I mean, when we launched the company I'm with now, I've been with for four years mm -hmm. and we put in 38 people our first month, personal recruits our team did over 100,000 in volume our first month. We made 17,000. So wow. I was able to replace my income quickly, but it wasn't about me as much as it was about my people. I'm like, I don't want to go into something that's going to get shut down again, obviously. <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. But number two, I want something where the average person can win. They can work their business online from home. And over the last couple of years, we've really got it dialed in. Our team did 25 million in sales in 2017, 2018, we did 30 million. And then this year, I don't know what the numbers are exactly, but we're having way, in fact, June and July were the two biggest months I've ever had in my network marketing career. We did almost $8 million in those two months alone. And this month right now, at the time of our recording, having this conversation, we're actually ahead of June and July. Wow. So I don't know where we're going to end up because obviously the month isn't over as of right now, but it's, it's going to be another record breaking month. And it's just exciting because we have so many people winning. We're bringing in over 10,000 new customers a month. We're doing it all on social media. We have this, this, this strategy of creating curiosity on social media, attracting people to us, using Facebook and Facebook messenger to connect with people, expose them to the opportunity or the products through these private Facebook groups. We call the strategy ATM, ad tag message. You add a prospect to the group. You tag them in a video or a post you want them to see. You send them a follow-up message. And then we even do what's called group chats, group messages, where you put your prospect in a group chat with your upline with two to three people. So I'm telling you, man, like we've got not just our own team winning and not just our company winning. We've got students in 50, 60, 70 different companies that are using these strategies and having success for the first time, seeing duplication for the first time. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean everybody that does this is going to have success. But what it does mean is as a leader that's building a big organization, you can see duplication happen much faster. And once you have that growth and momentum, like we're bringing in 10,000 new customers a month on average. Our biggest month so far, I think it was like 12,000 new customers. And our biggest recruiting month, I think, was like 1,000 new people. So, it's wow. you know, it's interesting. My team is not that big. Like, people are like, oh, you must have a huge team. I'm like, yeah, I mean, we have thousands of active distributors all over the world. But when I say thousands, it's like between, you know, 45 and 5,500 active distributors every month. That's not that big. And That's we're doing exciting. millions a month. Millions a month, right? Like, I have friends of mine in other companies that have – 50,000 person teams that are doing less revenue than my team. Wow. Now, of course, those 50,000, let's just say 10,000 are active, right? But they're, they're doing significantly less revenue with 10, 15, 20,000 active distributors. Now, I don't say that to them. I just know their numbers and they know mine. I'm not like, hey, you do realize if you had your team over here in my company, you'd make way more money and you'd have way more people making money. <laughs> like you'd make more and you'd have more people making money. Like they don't, you know, I don't even get into that because they're happy. I'm happy. I don't want to be that guy. That's like, yeah. mine's better than yours. But I do tell them my strategy is better than yours. Like if you have more people getting customers, that means you have more people making money and you have more volume. Too many companies are making the same mistake that Vima made where it's all about recruiting recruiters to recruit recruiters. And it's all about freeway calls and home parties and offline crap. And, or, or it's like the really crazy complicated stuff. 
you know, like they've got these like really elaborate funnels and really elaborate, like, you know, they're teaching blogging and YouTube and, and, you know, set up your own website, brand yourself. And it's funny cause I'm, I'm big on branding, but I like simple branding tips for my team. Now, if somebody says they want to monetize a brand, that's different. You're trying to be an internet marketer. You don't need to duplicate anything. If I'm selling courses, which I do, if I'm selling, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to build a brand that I want to make money selling books, courses, uh, masterminds, coaching, totally different space because I'm not trying to duplicate other people, right? I'm not trying to take a part-time spare time person and teach them something simple that they can do around a busy schedule. I need simple, simple, simple simplicity, and, 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 you know, having a culture can make you a fortune. And that's what we really have. We have a great culture, phenomenal leaders, everybody works well together. And then we have this system that everybody is using to help the newest part-time person create, you know, a post that will get them some, some, some leads and help them generate some sales. You know, we, we have a simple formula for exposing, like you know, we have scripts, resources, PDFs, like all that. And we also, by the way, have all of this inside of our academies because we have so many students in different companies that obviously, you know, they, we can't give them our company and team specific content. So we created generic content for them. So, you know, I know that's like a super long winded answer to your question about my story, but I just figured I'd might as well just give it all in one, <laughs> in one 10 minute a tangent. I don't even know. How long. I probably talked longer, 15, 20 minute tangent than, than to, you know, go back and forth and explain it. So, you know, that's, that's really how we ended up in this situation though, is that we were just so sick and tired of the old school, you know, strategies. And, and you know, it's funny because sometimes the old school guys get offended. They're like, Oh, are you saying that stuff doesn't work anymore? Like I had someone say that on one of my YouTube videos a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, not one video I've ever said that doesn't work. I believe anything works. If I go knock on doors, or if I go cold call people, that works, but nobody wants to do that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, no, they, uh, yeah, and you're right. You know, it's funny because, and, and I focus a lot on that just in my own business and honestly with the podcast, just trying to understand how to, how to meld the two worlds because right. let, let's be honest, the, it, it works for, um, I mean, it, it, it's worked for somebody, you know, we've got leaders in our business who've been in the business for you know 20 plus years and made millions upon millions of dollars and it worked for them. Like it, has the world changed that much? I mean, every time I look at my, my daughter wearing high-waisted jeans that I swore went out in the early nineties, I, I realized that, Oh wait, the world is the same. It just recycles itself. And <laughs> yeah, it, totally. It, it works, but are there better ways of doing it? Yeah. Now, have those ways all been figured out? No. And that's why there's, I mean, I was, uh, you know, I have, I have, a, I have my, my degree is in, is in economics and uh, economics basically, you know, talks about arbitrage, you know, this opportunity to, to, to specialize and, and get better and, and, and take advantage of, of situations. And that's right. That's, that's kind of where we are. I, I love what you're saying about the, the ad tag message. You know, I spent a lot of time our, we built a lot on our business uh, using Facebook heavily. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I have um, the, the Facebook Messenger apps that uh, you can actually get on your desktop, both on Windows or on my Mac, are fantastic because now I can get it off of my thumbs and actually go to a full keyboard to type, which is kind of cool. Right. Um, which is That's smart. I mean, I, personally, I don't like that. But for someone that – my wife does. So yeah. she's like that. She would rather respond to messages on her laptop so yeah, it's, it's, it, and again, this is where so many people are close minded to learning new things and you have to be willing to adapt. You have to be willing to, if you want to be an entrepreneur, especially in today's day and age, like literally what's working today may not be working in, in as, as soon as like a month from now. I mean, it's, things are evolving so quickly and there's always some new gimmick and you have to discern between the gimmicks and what are real strategies and tactics and yeah. So anyway, I don't want to go on a tangent about that, but yeah, I think that's awesome that, you know, someone can literally use the technology in different ways to make it work for them because not everybody wants to be on their phones all the time. Like I am and I'm on the phone all the time, but I'm on messenger. Yeah. Right. Like I think that's so much easier and I become addicted to it because it's just so easy. It's so fun. I can be, I can be so hands-on in the trenches with my entire team and I'm not tired. 
right? Like I have a normal work schedule. Like I'm not on my phone on phone calls from morning till night. Now, of course, there are times where I have to do a phone call or I have to, you know, do something in the evening. But most of my business is conducted during the day. Most of my business, like I do a lot of my videos during the day. I do a lot of my follow-ups during the day. Like I'm not, you know, having to miss a lot of my kids' you know, functions or, you know, especially with my son's travel baseball, we were talking about that before the, the, you know, we started recording and, you know, that, I mean, you know how time consuming that can be. I mean, there's practices, games, and as they get older, there's strength and conditioning and all kinds of things, like almost something going on every night. Like I can't justify building a business and missing things that are, so, I mean, they're only young for so long. Right. And so that was a big reason we went in this direction. We were like, we don't want other parents to have to sacrifice their children or, you know, let's say someone isn't a parent. I mean, I'm sure there's other things that people want to do with their lives versus out every night doing meetings or, you know, better yet on Zooms and on freeway calls every day, all, all day. You know, like I see these leaders bragging about, I'm on my fifth Zoom. Like, what are you doing? All the, you can't find a more efficient way to say the same thing over and over again. I just, you know? So anyway, long story short, I say that a lot. Uh, I, I feel like ultimately you got to have efficiency. You have to have systems and you must use technology. You have to be willing to, to make adjustments and embrace the fact that technology is here to stay. Social media is here to stay. I get these, these old school guys, man. They're like, oh, Facebook. I would never want to rely on just Facebook to build my business. I go, well, I tell you what, if Facebook goes away, I'll just find a different social media platform to use. If, yep. if I got to use a LinkedIn or Instagram, I will. I mean, now if they all went away and you say, hey, John, the only way to build an MLM business, you got to go back and do with free weight calls and home parties. I'm done. I'm done. I'll just quit MLM, do something else. Yeah. Like as much as I love it, I will never go back to doing it that way. And that's the, uh, you know, having, having that in, in the tool chest, so to speak, knowing how and having to do it are to two, two totally different things. You know, it's funny. Right. You about, you know, you talked about doing mortgages. I did mortgages. I actually spent all of 2009 doing VA mortgages. Let me tell no you, way. A bad year to be doing mortgages. <laughs> That's like the worst. I got out in 2008. Yeah. I mean, I, I had, I had three loans that closed, but never funded as a refi because the bank went out of business during the rescission period. Like it was insane. Jeez. The amount of stress that was on me was it's so stressful. And that's one of the things I love about network marketing is that it, I mean, you can make, you can make silly good income. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's plenty of work and you can be, you know, if, if you don't do it the right way, you can miss all those times. Like you were talking about doing a meeting every night and training on Saturday. And yeah, I mean, my kids, like, like, you know, like you said, I'm my youngest place, travel baseball. Uh, my 12 year old is on a traveling cheer squad. So, I mean, it's, we're, we're busy. And, but with network marketing, I can be on my phone. I love the fact that you and I, for the most part. And, and, and let's be clear, on your phone, but you're on Messenger. And exactly. here's why, or on Facebook, the actual app itself. Here's why that's powerful. Something's going on, you just put your phone down. My daughter runs into the room. Daddy, daddy. Well, she can call me daddy anymore, right? And she's 10. She's too cool for that. Yeah. <laughs> dad, dad. Hey, something, something, something. I want to show you my homework. I want to ask you a question. I can put my phone down. Yep. I don't have to shush her. Now, again, are there times if she walked in here right now and this was during, you know, if this was just last week before they were in school. Right. And they oh, come yeah. and I'm on a, I'm on a, you know, zoom with you right now. Then yes, of course I'd say, Hey, when I'm done, but that's not what I'm doing all day, every day. Exactly. That's what I used to do. Right. I'd be out of the house doing sit downs and you know, one-on-one -on -one presentations and Oh my gosh, the amount of calls we had to do. We used to do role playing the script. We would practice the script with people. Do you know how torturous that was? Like I literally can't role play a script with anybody ever again because I have like PTSD from doing it. Yeah. Well, having been in sales all of my adult life, yeah, I, I've been, <laughs> you know, the deal. In fact, I literally on my desk right now, I have sitting a copy of the challenger sale, which is, you know, a great sales methodology book. The, uh, the it company that I work with is a challenger company. And I literally have a two day challenger training coming up in like a month that I'm like, Oh crap. Like I have to read this book. I'm going to have to go and role play for two days. I'm going to, yeah, just oh, honestly rather chew on a bullet, but that's what, you know, that's, that's the things we do to pay the bills. So the problem is, and I think you've become the same way. I find myself becoming what I call psychologically unemployable. 
Yes. I'm, yes. I'm tired of having to, to report to somebody. Now, if my boss is listening, Hey buddy, I love you. But that being said, I'm still, you know, I, 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 I've got that entrepreneurial bug and it's just a matter. It's, it's not if it takes off, it's when in which one, right. right? It's just, so, you know, so I've got a lot of things, a lot of things going. So, well, and we've all heard those stories, right? Like you hear my story. It took me seven years to make a full-time income in network marketing and 16 years to get to six figures a month. And now we're making multiple six figures a month. So you hear those stories and it's like, man, if I just stick with it long enough, things will work out. And, and I do believe that's the case. However, I got to discern. You got to discern because if I would have just stuck with the company, I'll, I'll just say the name, but it doesn't matter at this point. I was there seven years, but I left a long time ago. If I stayed with ACN forever, mm -hmm. that would have been a bad decision. Yeah, look at So it. as much as I'm like, stick with it, keep going. I also feel like you have to discern like, am I sticking with my dream? Yes. Am I sticking with a profession? Absolutely. But I'm not going to just stick with a company if I don't believe in it. If I think bringing someone into it would actually be a bad thing, then that's not a company I'm going to bring people into, obviously, right? And it took a while to, to finally come to the realization and be honest with myself that, you know what, this is not a viable opportunity anymore. They, if they're not willing to change the way they conduct their business, then I need to take my business elsewhere because I have people relying on me. I have people wanting to follow me and they'll stay in the company if I tell them it's worth it, but I know it's not. So I can't lie to them. I got to go. Yeah. And, you know, nowadays, obviously, we, we know exactly what we're doing, know exactly how to help someone. But still, there's going to be people that join my team that are going to quit because maybe network marketing's not for them or maybe they want to go sell services. It's funny, actually. I tell people, when I get women that want to look for an opportunity, I bring those women into my network marketing business because 90% of my, my team is women. Now, of course, I'm a guy and there's other guys involved, but I'm just saying high percentage of women. But with my, and that's just network marketing in general. I think it's like 75%. But when I get guys that I feel like, you know, I'll show my business or I'll talk about it. But if they don't see a lot of value in it or they're not excited about it, I have a financial services agency that I've had for five years now. Now, I don't do much with it, being honest. I mean, it's, I'm just, I don't speak the language. I've never sold an insurance policy or an annuity or, you know, any of that stuff. But, I have an agency that's one of the top agencies in the country. I get a small override and all I do is bring people to the table and it's mostly men. <laughs> it's mostly men. I got guys making two, three, five, 10, 15,000 a month, you know, pending on the month, selling insurance, you know, getting in front of, of, of clients. You know, we've got mortgage protection, we've got index universal life, all these different policies. We have leads, we have a system, but my buddy runs it. I mean, he does all the work. I just bring people to the table and for me, that's, you know, just a, a nice, a nice side hustle, if you will. It's an extra income stream. You know, we make, you know, decent money with it, but my, my, my agents make way more than I do. I just get a small override. I don't sell personally. No. Uh, in fact, the license is in my wife's name. You know, cause I, like I said, I don't like studying, taking tests. So, you know, she, she would have got the license years ago. She renews it every year. But the, the, the neat thing is it's, uh, it's something that, you know, people can go out kind of, it's, it's a job. You're getting hired, you know, they can fire you. It's just like anything else, but people like it because it has a, a lot of the, the freedom and flexibility that a networking business has, a network marketing business has, because these guys can write policies on the weekends, the evenings, yep. you know, obviously yep. if they choose not to do anything, they don't have to. Now, if someone's inactive for six months, you know, obviously they're going to terminate their contracts because they're not even producing. But for the most part, they don't really care what people do because there's no, there's no hour, hourly or salary, right? It's just you go out there and you write business, you make money. What I don't like about those types of businesses is it's not really encouraged. Not that you can't do it. You technically could build a team and leverage yourself, but that's not encouraged, right? It's encouraged to go out there and sell. And if you decide to build an agency, you can. For me, as you obviously know, I want to go build a team and leverage myself. And that's my passion, but I like having something that, you know, a guy, a, a guy friend of mine that says, hey, not happy, not making enough money, don't want to sell products, not excited about an MLM type, you know, opportunity. What else would you suggest? I'd probably tell them financial services because I have confidence that they can make good money 
with or without ever recruiting anyone ever. And there's leads and a system and support. So it's, it's neat to have a couple different options. But of course, again, my number one thing is what I'm passionate about, which is my network marketing business. It's just nice to have some, some different options. In fact, that's why we also started our training and coaching business because we had so many people from other companies that I'm like, okay, I, I can't recruit them. They're happily married, yep. right? They're, they're with a company that they actually believe is the best company on the planet. And that's why they're, they're, they are in that company. I'm not going to be the guy that's going to say mine's better than yours because that's just an opinion anyway. That's like saying cars are better than trucks. Well, Who you might, you, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Especially out of a guy from Utah, right? Like, no, no, no. Trucks are better cars. But so, right. Like somebody might say, I like, I like, I like uh, Tesla. I don't want to, I don't ever want to have to pump gas again. Right. And then somebody else says, oh my gosh, like I need to hear the sound of the engine. Like, you know, or, or oh, I, I love Tesla, but yours is ugly, man. You got the SUV. I got the sedan. I mean, it's right. So we all have an opinion of what's beautiful, what's best, what's, you know, our, you know, my wife's hotter than your wife. You can't say that to people. My kid's smarter than your kid. You can't say that to people. So with network marketing, I don't get into the whose company's better because it's all an opinion. If someone loves their makeup product, how can I say my weight loss product is better than their makeup product? But yep. that's why I put together training. That's why I put together courses because I'm like, I want to be able to help these people with where they're at. And yep. I know that's the same thing you're doing, right? Like you're not trying to pitch and sell everyone your MLM. In fact, these days, when you meet someone that is branding themselves and they're moving in the direction of podcasting videos on YouTube or Facebook or even LinkedIn. Now we're uploading videos on LinkedIn these days, right? They're, they're on the gram, right? They're doing their IG stories and all that stuff. Like typically these people, when they build a following, they start to realize like, Hmm, I could actually monetize my brand. I don't have to just have one thing. I could have coaching. I could have, uh, you know, all, all these different ways of, you know, uh, affiliate marketing has been super lucrative for us. We just had another affiliate contest that we got first place in just a couple weeks ago. And we won, I think the guy deposited $6,600 into our bank account yesterday. Wow. That's crazy. And that was, honestly, I didn't feel like we did that good. I mean, Shalene Johnson, when we promoted her Marketing Impact Academy, dude, we made $50,000 selling her $2,000 course because we had 50, 50 units yep. that we sold, right? You get 1,000 each, 50% commissions on a $2,000 course made 50,000. Plus, we got a fifteen thousand dollar bonus for placing in third. I think she took me like sixty five thousand dollars. It was crazy, right? And this was this was probably one of the most lucrative affiliate launches we did. But that's not even my course. That's not my program. I'm selling someone else's. You didn't anyway, I'm going on a tangent here again, but you get my point. It's, it's totally exciting. get your point. No, and you know I appreciate it. I mean, you and I, I think we could probably sit here and just uh, you know just riff for, for hours probably. But, uh, we, uh, I, I do want to be cognizant of your time. I know that you've got a very busy day. Um, but I did want to give you just a minute to, uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, whether, whether it be your, your coaching, your courses or, or whatever, just, uh, you know, so one, I can, you've provided a ton of value for me, obviously, but I want to, want to give you a chance to provide you. Know, so I can provide some value for you and hopefully, sure. hopefully help out there. Yeah, well, I tell you what, people always want to know like more about what we do. What's our system, our strategies, you know, using social media to build businesses, especially a networking business. And I'll give you guys a download. If you go to mylifestyleacademy.com, mylifestyleacademy.com forward slash download, forward slash download, you can get a free download that has a lot of that information. And of course, that also puts you on our email list where you get our most up-to-date training emailed right to your inbox. I, you know, for us, we're always paying attention to not just what's working for us and our team, but what's also best practices in the market because we invest a lot of money in ourselves. We, you know, Brendan Bouchard's mastermind, we did that for a couple of years. Ray Higdon's mastermind. I mean, we, we try to get around the best of the best and always stay on top of what's working best because, as much as I love what I just covered, I think this is helpful to your listeners. I don't know if it'll be as helpful in a year or two because things are always evolving and changing. There might be a totally different new social media platform we're all using a year from now. I doubt Facebook or Instagram or some of the big dogs YouTube are ever going anywhere, but I do think there's, I mean, look, TikTok, 
My kids, my daughter is on TikTok quite a bit. My son is on Snapchat all the time still, which I, I kind of thought Snapchat would die off, but the young kids, they, that's still their number one communication source. And then, you know, my daughter's not allowed to have Snapchat, but she's on TikTok all the time. So, it, you know, there's always something new, a new strategy, a new platform, uh, something, something changes like the algorithm and everybody freaks out. But I did a video yesterday and it got 60 shares and thousands of views. I think it's got like 4,000 views at this point. So people are still wanting the content. It's just there's more competition. Absolutely. And Facebook is, you know, doing what they do, right? They're, they're making, I heard Gary V say F the algorithm. Now he obviously didn't say F, he said the real word, but <laughs> I can say it on your podcast, but he said F the algorithm. He said it like five times in a row because he's so sick of hearing people talk about it. He's like, the algorithm changes all the time. Yes. People are like, yeah. He's like, great. Then there is no algorithm because it's always changing. So that means there isn't an algorithm. And I'm, I was laughing because I'm like, dude, that is, I mean, it's genius. It really is. That's so brilliant. It's true. If the algorithm is always changing, how is there even an algorithm? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's the point of an algorithm. It's that it's the same. You plug it in, you, you put in X, you get out Y, but that doesn't always work that way. So now the I, algorithm's always changing. So there is no algorithm. I'm like, man, that is, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's true. I mean, you know, and you know, you, you, like you said, you studied, you studied math. Was it mathematics? Uh, it was economics. So economics. Got it. Same, same difference to me. Right. But that's, yeah. I mean, algorithm says to me that it's the same to predictable, outcome and it that's not the case at all because it's always changing so exactly. we can't we can't get upset because we used to get more views or we used to get more this or more it's like okay i mean i used to make a lot of money in mortgages because the rates were low well yeah sure people might say well they're actually lower right now yeah but it's also harder to get a loan closed and it used i mean like spending time in the past like in my glory days right like it used to be this and this used Get over it, man. Like things are always evolving. Things are always changing. And in fact, that download, that is a very new, most up-to-date download. And they'll also see that we give them a special offer, a deep discount on one of our top academies that we just updated. So it, it's we're always updating our stuff and paying attention to the changes because the one thing that we know is constant is change. Absolutely. Amen to that. That's the only thing that's constant. So That's the only thing that's constant. You're right. Oh, fantastic. Well, hey, John, I appreciate you so much hopping on with me. Uh, you know, this has been a lot of fun. We'll have to do it again sometime. And, uh, you know, next time you get out to, uh, you get, you get out to Salt Lake City, because I know you do, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to get together. But uh, yeah, it sounds good, man. That'd be fun. Appreciate you hopping on with me. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, glad, glad to have you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, JR. Hey, thanks for listening, and please remember to subscribe. And if you loved us, leave us an awesome review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you consume your podcasts. Now, if you'd like some free training for your team on how your recruiting efforts can be bettered and brought into the 21st century, go to podcast.mlmrenegade.com and get your copy of the Renegade Recruiting Kickstarter.